May I now request respected principal sir to address us. Dear parents, dear students, dear teachers, we have assembled here to celebrate a glorious life. The life of Sri Aurobindo and 151 years of that wholesome, fulfilling, glorious life. Before I speak anything about Sri Aurobindo, I think it's pertinent to examine whether, if at all, Sri Aurobindo is relevant to you. You are young people, born not so long ago, although you might think you're very old, but you are quite young and reared in to face the world. And in a few years' time, you will have crossed the portals of the school, got into college and then higher education, landed yourself yourselves jobs and be ready to take on the world and dreaming big and soaring high. So what does a man of 151 years and a wisdom that is probably bygone in your opinion perhaps, what can he offer to you? This is a big question which merits a very big response, for which we don't have time today. What is important to remember is that Sri Aurobindo was not a recluse. Sri Aurobindo was not somebody removed from reality. Sri Aurobindo was not somebody who was in his cave of tapasya, oblivious of the world outside. We do know for a fact, and at least some of you should know, that he spent 40 years between 1910 and 1950 virtually in a few rooms in Pondicherry. He rarely ventured out. The last 12 years he didn't venture out at all from what is now called Sri Aurobindo's room. But even before that, there were equal number of periods and amount of time when he was all by himself. Yet sitting all by himself, he bothered himself with the Second World War. He bothered himself with the Crips mission. He answered queries from political leaders about the future of the country and the direction it ought to take because he was asked those questions. But that is not all. Because you might argue that independence is achieved. So what more is there to it? Well, many of you study commerce in this school. I write now, I have here in front of me, David. How many of you know that the logo for the ICAI is actually given by Sri Aurobindo? And the, what is written on that logo is also given by Sri Aurobindo. That means Sri Aurobindo bothered himself to the extent of even coining logos and giving, you know, mantras or setting the agenda for chartered accountants in India. This is something not everybody will know. Some of you will. So this is the extent to which he bothered himself. Between 1947 and 1950, the three years that Sri Aurobindo was alive, he set the agenda for the nation. He dreamt, and not only dreamt, he foresaw the resurgence of Asia, something that has come to pass. He foretold the spiritual renaissance of India in the sense that the world would listen to Sri Aurobindo, wherever they may be in the world. And that has happened. Many yogis, mystics, gurus, 
have taken the message of Sri Aurobindo to the world. He talked about the dire need of human unity, talked of the League of Nations, the United Nations, the necessity of it, the necessity to prevent war and catastrophe, yet knew how to face war when it was inevitable. That is the kind of breadth that he had. But all that might still be insufficient for you to consider him as a beacon light for the future. However, I would argue with you that Sri Aurobindo, first of all, was a quintessential Indian. I was faced with a question in my postgraduate studies when I was the lone Indian in a batch of 144 students. What does it mean to be Indian? What does India stand for? How is India different from the UK, France, Germany? People know that we have spicy food, we have snakes, we have rockets, we have snake charmers, we have forests, all that is known. But what does it mean to be Indian? Sri Aurobindo was one person who suggested it and wrote a magnum opus called The Foundations of Indian Culture where he put forward what India stands for. And he did that through three perspectives. First of all, there was a critique of an article by William Archer, which raised the question whether India is civilized. Second, like an European, and in fact he had an European upbringing for almost a decade and a half of his life, a rationalistic critic of Indian culture. And lastly, as an Indian, he wrote the defense of Indian culture, and finally, the renaissance of India. All of you want to be global citizens. When you actually become global, you will see that if you are in a situation like me, like I was, and you are asked to define through your life through your daily life. I was a student. What does India mean? What does India stand for? You would have to grope. I didn't because I had recourse to Sri Aurobindo. So will you. So these are some of the few things that are important. You all study English with Anjana ma'am, with Onulekha ma'am and others. Believe you me, I didn't study English beyond school. But the English that I have, or that I developed, or that I learned, was one that had to pass through the anvil of Sri Aurobindo's works. So to learn to appreciate poetry, to appreciate drama, to learn to appreciate the nuances of short stories, and long poems, and short poems, and epics, Sri Aurobindo is the place to go to. When you want to learn what the future has in store scientifically, you not only have certain works of his, but you also have poems like the electron to fall back on. Last but not least, who is Sri Aurobindo? Where is Sri Aurobindo today? Yes, Sri Aurobindo is part of a universe of consciousness which dwells around us, dwells here, dwells in the cosmos, dwells in the universe, dwells amongst us today, floating in the ether. More important, Aurobindo in each one of us. Aurobindo is in you, in each one of you present here. Sri Aurobindo is you. Sri Aurobindo is that in you that wants to search for the future, that dreams of a nobler, a brighter, a more glorious future. Sri Aurobindo not only gives that hope to us, 
but sits on a hilltop of solitude and certitude, consoling us in our darkest days, giving us strength to fight on, and showing us the goalpost where we need to go to. That is what distinguishes Sri Aurobindo from many others whose 151 years we may be celebrating today. Sri Aurobindo is the incubator. Sri Aurobindo is the creator of that glorious future which we shall collectively build. So when Sri Aurobindo is you, that is that you, do you have to read a lot to know him? Yes, perhaps. But some of it is already in you through all these many years spent in the Oru Nursery School and the Future Foundation School. You have met him in that marble edifice in the Home of Grace, in our knowledge building. He lies there in state his nails and his hair proudly showing who he is. I had the luck to find that out for myself in a very different and strange way. I don't know whether I've ever recounted that story here. We have a house in Mottumram, a small little house, and it has a garden. And Sri Aurobindo came there. His relics came there a few times. When I say Sri Aurobindo came there, I mean his relics came there a few times. Part of that property got sold to a promoter. And then it was reclaimed. And then we had a caretaker in that house who was finding it impossible to look after it. There were theft after theft. It was becoming impossible for us. One day, it occurred to us, or it struck us, why is this happening? One stroke after the other of bad luck. Well, to tell you a, you know, a long story in a very few words, there was a marble little thing like a tabletop on which Shurabindo's relics came and sat every time, night from 1973. And it was in disuse behind the toilet in the back garden. It struck us. We didn't see the connection. We brought it in front. We installed it. And we started offering incense and flowers every day. From that day on, for the past decade and a half, life is absolutely smooth. It struck me. Sri Aurobindo is not in that marble. He just came two times, one for 20 minutes, the second for one night, and the third time he was there for a few minutes. That is who he is. We want that strength, that power, that force, that creative genius within us. And Sri Aurobindo has suggested let us invoke that Sri Aurobindo whose 151 years of service to the nation is one thing, but whose continued service to the nation and the world is what we would like to celebrate. And that future is in your hands. What you make of Sri Aurobindo is up to you. Yes, Sri Aurobindo live, will live on despite you and me. But if we collaborate with him, we will be ennobled. We will benefit. We will find a meaning to our lives. We will be made whole. Thank you very much. As I sign off, I would like to read the message of the day. Om Nation continent. Le choix est impératif. C'est la vérité ou l'abîme. La mer. Men, countries, continents. 
the choice is imperative. Truth or the abyss. Thank you.